Hello, Sula here from mistyhilltops.com. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, I want to show you how I go through the process of creating a scrapbook layout. Now for this one, I am going to work on a traveler's notebook layout, but it could just as well be a scrapbook layout. Um, it could be the bigger ones. Obviously, I work on smaller projects, so even if I wanted to turn it into a six by six um, scrapbook layout or something but this is the process that I go through and I thought I just take you uh, with me through the entire journey not only of creating the physical page but also creating the digital version to prepare it for the physical page so here what I have is I already prepared my um, um, my canvas basically and I pulled in some from the templates that I have um, I pulled in some of the the elements that I would use. I want to create a page that is a two by three photo, and I'm thinking that I would like the photo to be somewhere here on the page. And um, you see me, um, I'm not randomly placing things. Um, I'm working with what is called the rule of three. So you would divide the page into three um, sections like one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the same would go um, um, just the um, the vertical way. But um, so I am wherever these lines, um, so basically creating nine fields here, and wherever these lines uh, cross um, of these nine feet, nine fields, that's a good place to place things. So here I am trying, obviously I'm working with a traveler's notebook spread. And so my space is somewhat limited, but, um, I am using this, uh, about here would be one of the, the third lines here. And so that's where I'm placing my photo. And then I, I just need to, uh, uh, randomly just start um, to pull in some um, some papers that that will then end up being papers so um, let's see I'm trying to do something that I haven't really done before so again I paid attention that the photo doesn't go across sometimes I do that though it goes across the two pages but in this case I would just like the uh, photo to be um, to be on the left side of the page and then um, I always like when I can still see much of the papers here. So I'm thinking I can pull in that paper there and um, I would just go ahead and uh, here I can create these rectangles and then fill them. Here's my fill color. But um, to save myself, I do that a lot with existing um, um, elements that I have because I don't like to um, spend all that time reinventing the wheel. So I am just uh, going to see how I want to place things. I think I'm thinking this is somewhat nice. And then I am still going to change uh, the shape of this by just pulling this one up a little above the photo. But also I know that I am distressing the edges of my paper. And so I'm okay with still uh, changing things around a bit here so that um, even with distressing the edges there will still be more of an edge left um, so here I have that element I thought I might want to use a hexagon the hexagon is not really a negotiable one that I want to change the shape width of I will see where I can place this on my layout if there is a space for it. So I'm paying attention here that the hexagon, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, if it fits because I added the flag there and I kind of like the flag, so I might not even use that hexagon piece. Um, I do want to use a, a paper strip so that's going to go probably somewhere here and I might turn it into a, uh, a bunting of some kind. Um, that depends and then I'm thinking 
whether I want this behind or on top of of this um this paper flag but I'm not uh, on the on the um silhouette version of this I'm not too particular about all these kinds of things because I uh can always change things around when I work with the real um paper so this is just to give me an a general idea and um to give this a little more contrast no nope, not working I um, am changing the color of the circle here and I'm thinking I will pull the circle backward. And I'm noticing it will go across the two pages there, but that's okay for me. And um, rather than sending it back step by step because I have all these things, I'm just going to copy and paste these things right back on top so that makes it it's right here on top of the circle there and i'm not sure do i like the circle let me see if i want the circle maybe um on top of this um now it might just have to be um All right, I could use that um, layer panel there, which I usually am too lazy. So I do the same thing again. I collect, no, I like when, so I'm just going backward here. I like when the circle is um, covered here. Um, I might use this hexagon piece and I would have to then go and um, see so again I copy and paste it to put it on top um, to see if no I don't think so um, but I still want to use a little more paper here so how about um, this one obviously this is now all the way in the back ground and so I might just pull this let's see where I want this. So I'm thinking maybe pulling it behind here. Yeah, I think that looks kind of okay. And it would end here behind the photo, basically. Um, so that to me looks okay. Then I'm thinking I could put, oh, let me pull all these things to the front. These are my my clusters and again by um, by cutting them out and um, pasting them back in I pull them to the front um, that's a quick way to do it and I'm thinking now it might not work with the title going here uh, with the page being divided there but I usually don't really uh, uh, worry so much about that often I plan a title where I want to put put it, and I end up putting it in a in a very different place uh, when I w finish my page here. And so here I'm again. I'm trying to create the visual triangle. So and I'm so I'm thinking this is where I will put the clusters. But again, I do retain these cluster thing uh, play clustering places, and then I'm thinking I could do a whole lot of journaling right here so i don't think i need this um, hexagon right there it would have been fun but i wanted to use this paper flag so basically right now i have finished um i have finished my uh my basic template and you see it just takes a few minutes to do that um and then um, um i copy and paste it because I don't want to lose the original um, because even when I work with other papers they still um, they still uh, um, I want to make sure I have one reference point that is the original then you see here this is basically an eight uh, the the biggest size here like um, an eight and a quarter or something or eight and a half and by eight and a half size 
um, um, square and I use that to clip my paper to. So then I put this to the side here and this is where I will start clipping papers to to then um, add these to uh, to create my page. So I'm working with the um, Transatlantic Travel Collection by Cartabella and um, uh, this is a digital version of this and now I can start looking for what papers I want to use and I'm thinking I want a mid-level I don't want it too light because my background will be white unless I do some art behind it which I often end up doing that's quite correct I think I like this one and I pull it in sometimes it works like an uh, just works wonderfully and then sometimes it just doesn't and so to save myself to have to read just do this again and again i create a copy of this just um, i do command copy and then what i do is i take um, this one also copy and place it somewhere where i like it that's the nice thing about having a digital version now i could do this with actual normal papers uh, physical papers just as much um, then I would just, what I would do here is I would look at the measurements here and here and um, I would round it up, I guess, to 17 centimeters and this to 8.5 or something like that. So uh, for ease of reference, and then I would just um, be able to create my own, uh, uh, just use that as a cutting reference uh, if I wanted to trim by hand. But here I am just now going to clip this or crop this so I'm using the cropping tool right here and this will go in the background and um, right now I can't see because this is a pretty big paper here so the next thing I do is I look and um, so it would be the circle and I try save it saves me time if I go um, in order of the, le uh, the levels I guess um, that I'm using and I'm trying to think of what here would be a contrasting um, paper that's what I'm looking for and I'm seeing this one is lighter so I, I press the um, space key on my keyboard to bring up this enlarge and so that I can see how oh, this one is gray um, I'll use I think I'll use this one so I'm looking for contrasting papers and again I pull this back right in here and it has a ship and my actually the page that I will work on is not going to have uh, the photo is not going to have a ship so I'm going to see if I can place the circle and this is a circle that matches that fits the size of one of my circle dies and so um, I'm going to just crop the circle right here and um, put it here I will I will um, change the change uh, the arrangement again so that I can see if it works well enough I may have to go back so I want this paper next it depends like sometimes I run YouTube on the background to listen to something and then my it, it works more slowly or something if I'm having too much running on my computer and right now I'm also um, screen uh, screen recording so that is uh, a little much for my computer sometimes so here I am looking for a nice spot where I would uh, add this um, from which I want to crop this one and I'm thinking that I have most of the elements and then I want a dark one and let me see now I'm going to all right and this is where I grab this flag to crop that and then I can I will again pull the photo the title and the three clusters on top and now I can start arranging things here and I'm going 
backward because then I can see where everything goes and I still need to grab these two paper strips here. This I might want to change because it might not be enough contrast to this page here, to this paper here. But I, let me just grab um, these something for, and oh, I made the mistake to not copy. So I'm just gonna grab my piece of paper from here again. Sometimes I do that. Um, rather than copy, I use the one paper layer there that's there, but that's okay. So here again, um, that's why I try to use to work with copies. And then I'm thinking I would like, this one is, would go well with a striped pattern. So I'm pulling in the striped pattern right here, copy it. Um, I should have grabbed the other one, but it's already in here. So I might as well do it, um, crop it and this will go here. And then I just need one more strip of paper. And I'm thinking, how about this one here? Okay, again, trying to remember that. Oh, I don't need two copies, just one that I copy it rather than and then I'm trying to look for one. That's the nice thing with digital paper. I can always reuse the nicest part of the paper that I like and um, not worry about um, losing the pretty papers. Okay, let me see here. Now, that's why I keep the original because I wanna see this is on top of here, but basically behind this. So I'm grabbing again, I'm grabbing, did I, no, I'm grabbing the title and the clusters. Yep, I think I grabbed it all. And now I can pull this behind here. and move it so it covers. So now I can check and I do notice that there is very little contrast between these here. So I'm thinking I should change this one and this one. And that's a nice thing too with, um, with working with digital papers because I would not be able to tell as well with um, the with, with if I use up my, my nice papers and then I realize oh it doesn't work so well so here I can always reuse it redo it and I guess I could use I'm thinking for this one I guess I could use one that is slightly darker than the original one I could always use, of course, one of the really dark ones, but um, it uses a lot of ink. I might as well go with the black and see what that does. Then I'm just going to copy this guy here because the other one is already covered and I'm going to go right smack in the middle here where there's the most white parts as well. So let's see. Uh, which means I am going to select every piece that I have here. Take the photo. I can't quite see. We'll see. Nope, I didn't grab the photo. So let me grab the photo. I will 
insert this right on top and then I still don't like it it's too dark let me check with one lighter version but this is how I, I work in general maybe taking this piece all right so here I can again create a copy then I pull this one from here and I check if I like it or not and so here I am pulling again I am choosing all the elements that would come on top and cut them to see yeah I like this better I like this better than that one and then I need to change the circle one more time just to give it a little more contrast again and okay so I am going to use a darker paper for the circle and I'm thinking maybe no that would be too much writing let me yeah a flower a floral pattern is fine okay and again I'm taking the circle I could probably just use this circle right here it shouldn't matter all right and then I do I am aware that obviously with black it would use a lot of ink but I'm also hoping it would use my black ink rather than any of the others. So uh, I have to determine which parts go on top. And I think I have it all. It doesn't matter with this paper flag. No, it didn't matter because that paper flag needs to be in front of this paper okay so I think this is what I will have for my page and then um, I can I usually create my own um, this uh, digital scrapbooking kit comes with just a lot of um, tags which I already uh, with which I already created so here's just a bunch of tags and stuff so um, a lot of that I already have ready to go on pages so um, but this is what I then do I then take this and um, get it ready for printing so this is how I work on my pages and um, turn them into actual paper scrapbooking pages I hope you found this video helpful. Consider giving it a thumbs up if you did. Consider subscribing and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.